What is up guys, it is Nisho here, and with Coda the Duelist coming out on Friday, finally, um, it is about that time of the month, I don't, I don't know, like every few, every so often, every time there's a good set coming out, you know, I do these set dissections, and um, yeah, um, I, I was kind of slacking with uh, Maximum Crisis just because I got lazy. And uh, I'm probably going to slack off with this set as well, because um, I'm still working. And uh, these videos, although aren't the most work, it's just I don't really always feel like doing them. So, yeah, so today we got the Star Grails, this, the, or the World Chalice, as they're called, whatever they're going to, you know, be called in the actual TCG. I'm sure I'll have the names on screen as I'm talking about them. Um, but if I call some of them Star Grails and some of them World Chalice, just don't trip out. You know, that's just me uh, explaining it as I see because my version of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, it's kind of weird. is because half of them are still named Star Grails and the other half are named World Chalice. So, just, uh, you know, as, as long as you keep that in the back of your head, uh, you should be fine in this video. So, um, it's the... It's Star Grails or World Chalice are probably going to be the best link based deck, uh, come Coda de Duelist. Like, in the first ever era of links, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this deck is probably going to be the best deck if you want a link based deck that can actually do quite a bit. Um, a lot of people are still saying that this is going to be one of those decks that aren't really that good, that isn't really that good, and uh, it won't really be meta. But I think just having a decent deck that can uh, use the link mechanic is actually just attractive enough to people just so they can play it, get used to the mechanic and how it works, it's ins and outs, and then as more and better link decks come out, then that's when, you know, the transition won't be as rough versus the other people who won't be playing as uh, decks that are uh, as focused around links although links in my eyes are such an easy mechanic like a lot of people in the community are still showing signs that uh, they don't really understand it completely and uh, in my eyes they kind of look like complete idiots because it's pretty straightforward but um, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt just because it's a new mechanic and uh, you know new rules can sometimes mess with people especially the people who don't really play a lot so yeah Let's get to the actual cards. So, um, let's just get the normal monsters out the way. So, the normal monsters are uh, World Chalice or Star Grails Beckoned. I don't know what it's going to be called, but in my end, it's called uh, Star Grails Beckoned, uh, Star Grails Chosen, and Star Grail Bearing Priestess. These names will definitely be like, I'll leave the names of all the cards on screen or something. Um, but, you know, those are the three normal monsters the Priestess, level 2 1. Uh, Spellcaster normal, 2100 defense. Um, Chosen is a level 3 psychic. You could probably play a singular copy of um, uh, Emergency Teleport <laughs> if you want. And then Stargirl's Beckoned is a level 4 Earth Warrior. So you can play Rhoda as well. Next we have uh, Stargirlic Fairy Rise. So, um, I'm pretty sure, I, I said Star Relic, I said Star Grail Fairy Rise, uh, and, you know, obviously her name's gonna be changed to Star Chalice or something. And so, uh, if she's normal or special summoned, you can add a Star Grail monster from your deck to your hand. And, uh, so, uh, immediately this deck already has a Searcher, and, uh, it's only a level 2, but, um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be Link Summoning a lot for this deck, so it's not be- it's, that won't be too much of a problem. Um, and if this card is in your graveyard, you can send one monster from your hand or field to the grave, and then add this card to your hand. And that, like, there's no- That's actually pretty good, because it's like, you don't have to control, like, a World Chalice or a Star Grail or something. And, uh, you don't, and it's just any monster, you know, it doesn't have to be a uh, World Chalice monster either. And then you just add it from, oh, and you can send from your field as well. 
I mean, honestly, the, <laughs> a, a searcher that recycles itself when it's normal and, you know, it's a fact activates when it's normal or special, bro, like, sign me up already. <laughs> I mean, uh, this deck is pretty, is, isn't really that good, but, I mean, honestly, it, it does have its appeal. I, I do think this can be something pretty solid, um, even if not the best deck, but I, I have actually played it in one of my um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duels, and it can do a lot, it's just... I don't think the monsters themselves, like the Link monsters, are strong enough to warrant playing the actual deck. Like, they don't do enough by themselves. So next we have Star Relic, Star Grail. Um, I don't know what it's going to be called in the TCG, but I'll definitely leave um, its actual name. So, uh, Machine Dark level 5, 0 attack, 0 defense. Um, during either player's turn, if a monster is special from the extra deck, you can tribute this card and send that monster to the graveyard. Um, it doesn't negate the summon, and it activates after the monster is summoned, so kind of like bottomless or, you know, time space chapel, like one of those chapels. So, since, so because of that, um, it can, uh, affect fusions as well, you know, like fusions and, uh, because, you know, the, uh, like, cards like, um, Solemn Strike won't be able to negate a fusion summon because fusions, well, except for contact, but because fusions, uh, are summoned by a card effect, and so, um, it, Solemn Strike would miss its timing, but, you know, with this card, um, you can, since it's more, like, after the monster summon, kind of like Bottomless or something like that, you can just chain it, uh, activate it in the response window of the monster being summoned and you know you can only use the, each of the following effects of star Re relic star grail once per turn um all right that's that's a little weird uh but he's a level five with zero you know stats and honestly although it is nice that he gets a a little power against extra deck monsters it's not really the best and uh, let's see what his effects are. So, if this face-up card that was normal summon or set leaves the field, okay, already, you you can special summon <laughs> two Star Grail monsters from your deck, except Star Relic, Star Grail. Um, it just says leaves the field. Um, so normal summoning him and and then him leaving the field in any way, shape, or form um, is isn't really a bad idea. You get two free Star Grails, but the Star Grail monsters themselves aren't really anything special. Like, three of them are no monsters, and one of them's a Searcher, but, you know, uh, the Searcher's effect is only once per turn. Uh, but, yeah, that's definitely not a, the bad, the worst option, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then next... During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Star Relic card from your deck to your hand. So, I assume Star Relics uh, is going to be like their back row support. So, let me let me just look that up, because I, I didn't know they had more Star Relics. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they do, actually. Hmm. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm going to take a look at that as well. Uh, so... We have a uh, encounter with the Star Relic. It's a field spell. So uh, all Star Grail monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. And once per turn, if a face up Star Grail monster, you can show us to draw by battle or lease a field because of a opponent's card effect. Uh, it says opponents. You know, it, it's like we, we get so used to like these cards like Diagram and like Metal Foes where, you know, we, we want to pop our own cards. And even dinosaurs, like we want to pop our own cards now. And, you know, Konami has just, like, kind of, like, give it to us, and then it's, like, slowly taking that, that option away. And it feels a little weird, you know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's become something that we kind of crave in a card. Although, like, last year, it, like, it wasn't anything, like, we really cared about. Like, why would we want to destroy our own cards unless we were playing Metal Foes? And even then, like, why would we want to destroy our own cards? Like, unless, you know... I have like GoFu tokens out and then I can use those extra tokens for extra sets, you know, or something like that. Most times we, we wouldn't want to destroy our own cards, you know, to search something or gain advantage. But this year with uh, Diagram and uh, True Kings uh, coming to the stage, we, you know, and Dinosaurs as well, 
you know, like popping our own cards has kind of become something that uh, players like to do, and it's something that really goes into a lot of deck strategies. So effects that say that destroyed by your opponent's card effect really just is just a big, really big disappointment. But yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, you just special summon a star grab monster from the grave. That's it, or World Chalice Monster. I'm still not used to TCG names. It's like, I know that once I see the TCG name for a lot of decks, it's just going to be so corny. Half the time, the other time, I just don't care. And um, this is just one of the times where I just don't care. I, I, don't, really, I don't really think I'm going to play this deck, but it does look cool, so I'll give it that. Uh, so it is a field spell, so it is searchable, So, um, but its effect isn't really all that great. But you do target any Stargram monster, and because you have to special summon it in defense position, you can't summon out Link monsters. Just keep keep that in mind. And next we have a Star Relics Guidance or Beacon. I don't know. Um, there's two different names here. <laughs> so banish one Star Relic monster from your hand or face up uh, from your field. Then target two monsters in your graveyard. Special summon them. But they cannot attack this turn. Okay. Um, this summons any two monsters? Literally? <laughs> oh my god, this is so crazy. This is, it's crazy because it's so generic. But like, not generic at the same time. It just feels like this card can do, like, this This could really be a crazy card. And you know, it doesn't have, like, their effects are negated. Or, you know, you summon them in defense position. It just says they can't attack this turn. But it's a trap card. You can activate it during your opponent's turn. It's like, <laughs> this is actually real crazy. I actually really like this card. Uh, Star Relics Guidance. Um, I don't think Star Relics are gonna be too expensive. I, I know like maybe only one of their cards is a secret in Code of the Duelist. The rest are gonna be like Super and Ultra. Well, the, I, the Searcher is gonna be Ultra. The rest are gonna be like Super and Common and Rare. So it's not gonna be the hardest deck to pick up, but um, you might need a few cards outside of the archetype. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, so now we're getting to the World Chalice stuff because this Yu Gi Oh! Pro is silly, and for some reason, the, the devs decided to put to mix and match the archetype. Okay, so next we have a uh, World Chalice's Protector Dragon. Um, so when a card or effect is activated that targets a Link monster you control, that is linked. I don't know, just as a monster you control that's linked. Uh, send this card from the hand or field to the graveyard and negate the activation. If you do destroy the card, you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one normal monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense mode. Um, but only to a link zone. Uh, okay, so first off, his effects only activate to cards that are linked, or like his effect is only useful to, like if you have a link monster on the field. So uh, his effect to when a card or effect is activated that targets a monster, it has to be something that's linked. And although you know you can use it from the hand as well, so that's it's kind of like a benefit, but it's like I don't think it's good enough to really uh, make it worth playing more than a few copies of. But um, his graveyard effect is pretty nice just because it's a graveyard effect, you know, you banish it, summon a normal monster from your graveyard into a link point or link monster zone, and uh. Yeah, the second effect is only once per turn, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just so weird to me. It's just... Uh, it's nice that this is, like, the first Link deck, but I don't think they should focus too much on, like, Link points yet. Just because it's still something a little fresh and not really developed. You know what I'm saying? It's going to feel a bit gimmicky. So next we have... Uh, Let's start from the smallest Link monster and then work our way up. So, this is a Imduct the World Chalice Dragon, Link 1. He points up. That is so redundant. 
<laughs> he doesn't even let you summon into your own zones. It's just so freaking bad. But uh, it's one normal monster except a token, so I guess he's easy to summon. You can use any normal monster from the deck. And during your main phase, you can normal summon one World Chalice monster in addition to your normal summoner set. Alright, take back what I said about him being bad. <laughs> because uh, immediately, he uh, with him, you can just go into a rank 2. So um, if you... If you just go into him using like any of your normal monsters, I know that uh, I've seen uh, the Nationals live stream and they kind of showcase this deck and they show the them playing a uh, Agent of Venus. I, I forgot what it is. Agent of Creation Venus, I think his name was, and then uh, she summons out uh, the Mystical Shine Balls and the Shine Balls can go into a World Chalice, and then from there you get a, a double summon. And then, you know, there's, there's quite a few combos in this deck. It's just, uh, as I said earlier, I don't think these monsters are, like, strong enough to, like, to be, like, a standalone archetype. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this deck still needs a lot of stuff that can uh, give it power. So, at the start of the damage step, this card battles an opponent's monster this card points to. Uh, that's probably why it points up. But, you know, it's like... I, I guess you can kind of predict that, so if you're playing against a World Chalice deck, like, never summon a monster um, that's, like, in front of one of the Link Zones. Because, you know, if they ever summon out this Imduck or whatever, then, you know, you're kind of going to be screwed. Um, you can destroy that opponent's monster. Uh, yeah, so if, if he battles a monster that he points to, he's going to just destroy your monster for free um, at the start of the damage step. Luckily, he doesn't get any replay because of that, but still, he, I mean, honestly, he's only 800 attack. I don't really think that's a big deal. And lastly, if he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your hand. So, um, it does actually encourage a lot of Link Summoning, because um, if he's sent from field to the grave, you can special summon another World Chalice monster from your hand, and that's not including the one that you probably normal summon before you use him. So, uh, this deck probably is going to focus a lot on stacking up um, World Chalice monsters and um, in the hand and it's not the worst idea but it's like it's a fact that it's the hand only where you can run out of re because you can run out of resources quickly in your hand and uh, it's not exactly the best thing to focus on so um, next we have Eve the World Chalice Shrine Maiden so link to spellcaster water uh, 18 attack, no defense obviously, but two monsters with different uh, types and attributes. Oh my god, it's already we're already doing this different type and attribute thing. I mean, it, I, I guess it it makes sense because every World Chalice or Stargrail monster has like different attributes, but I don't think that should be on the card. Like that should not be a summoning condition. That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but you know, it could be any two monsters. It doesn't have to be World Chalice monsters. So. We can give it a pass because of that. So while this card is linked, I don't know if that means a mutual link or if it's just it has a card that's pointing to it. I mean, or if it's just one is pointing to a card. Um, it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, and also your opponent cannot target it with card effects. I assume that's a mutual link. So when she's pointing to someone and someone else is pointing to her as well, I think that's kind of what you need. But, uh, still, I mean, if you summon two of her, I, I think her effect would protect both of them. So, it's like, e like, both of them would be, like, invulnerable to being destroyed. And so, if a monster this card points to would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. Okay. Um, so, she's also a protector. Like, she protects herself, and then she also, um, gives protection to cards that she points to. But, you know, obviously... She can't point to spell and trap, so. And then, uh, if this card is sent from field to the grave, you special on the World Chalice monster from your hand. So it seems like every Link monster is going to have that. Every World Chalice Link monster is going to have. You can special summon a World Chalice from your hand. But, uh, again, you know, it's not really the best, uh, mechanic to have when the hand runs out quickly. Next, we have, uh, Aram, the World Chalice Blade Master. Now, this guy looks pretty lit. He's a fire type too. And uh, two World Chalice monsters linked to 2000 attack, Cybers type. And he has the 
two best possible arrows that a link monster can have so or a link two can have in my opinion um because you know it just opens up your board a lot so gains 300 attack for each world legacy monster in your graveyard with a different name uh okay so i guess the star relic is going to be the world legacy and then the world chalice is just going to be everything else so you contribute one world chalice monster this card points to then target one other monster in your graveyard special summon uh special summon it to your zone this card points to so you, you have to tribute a world chalice monster it points to to special summon a monster in your graveyard to a zone that it points to i guess it opens up the zone so you know you can probably always be able to use the effect i, I guess that's nice but it's like you have to tribute a world chalice that it points to. I, I I do think that's not the real, that's not the best thing to do. And then you're gonna use that effect once per turn. And if it's sent from, to, from field to grave, some world chalice from my hand. Eh, I don't know. I don't really. I'm I'm not really feeling this deck, man. It's like the, these cards look cool, but it's it's like it's nothing really attracting me to it. I might just do a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duels of it just, just once, just to see how that goes, but I don't know if I'll actually consider playing this deck. And lastly, we have Ningursu. Oh my god, I just slaughtered that name. The World Chalice Warrior. Uh, Warrior Earth, Link 3. And his arrows are kind of weird, it's like up, left, and right. So you, you don't even want him in the extra monster zone, honestly. You want him in the main monster zone, like, un most likely under um, your extra monster zone. So, like, the zone right under it. Like, that'll probably be the best zone for him. So, if you summon him, just keep that in mind. Um, so, when he's a link summon, draw cards equal to the number of World Chalice monsters this card points to. And you can only use that effect once per turn. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess under under the, the extra monster zone is the best place for him. Because um, you're probably going to have all RAM in the uh, extra monster zone since he has the best uh, the best arrows. Because uh, Imduck, although he has a nice effect, but um, all RAM is get, probably going to be the one that's going to stay there for you know for longevity. Since Imduck, you'd you'd probably use him for all the link summoning combos. And uh, so I mean that's going to be like at least one or two cards if you control like any other um world chalice monster but if you summon him oh you see it's his arrows are so weird i don't think you can summon him with uh because none of these uh world chalice monsters point exactly down so i don't think you'll ever be able to draw two cards off i mean three cards off its effect unless we get more world chalice monsters Or maybe because of Eve, actually. But, you know, that would have to be it. And then, uh... You can send one card from each player's... Oh, once per turn, you can send one card from each player's field to the graveyard. And then if this card is sent from fields to the graveyard, you special in a World Chalice monster from your hand. So it's kind of like a Scrap Dragon. And, uh... Being a scrap dragon, he can get rid of problem cards, but uh, you also get to choose which cards are sent from field from the field to the grave, so that actually makes it a little better. And um, you know, having the option just to send from field to grave, I guess, is is never a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? But you also have to send one of your own, so uh, still, it's not the best uh, choice of card here. Um, I know there is another one, another World Chalice spell card. So it turns out there's, there's actually two of them. So uh, the first one being uh, World Legacy Aegis. So you target two World Chalice monsters with different names in the graveyard, add them to your hand. So I guess that's going to be the one way that you uh, continue to get your World Chalice monsters back to your hand. But, you know, relying it on a single spell card isn't really the best option just because, you know, you won't always draw into it and... I feel like this deck, I feel like the main problem with this deck is, is that it's going to run out of resources quickly. And, um, next you, uh, 
if a link monster controls that is linked that would be destroyed uh, by, by battle you can banish this card from your graveyard instead so yeah i mean it's not the worst card um it's kind of like a uh, return to dragon lords you know you like you get something back and then in the graveyard it's like extra protection in case you ever need it so that's definitely not the worst thing and lastly what i assume to be the last card of the archetype is um battle for the world legacy uh, you, so you banish one face of monster you control then target one face of monster your opponent controls and that target loses attack and defense equal to the banished monster's original attack and defense not really that good uh i don't think i would play it just because it's like you're going minus one just to make up monster lose attack you know like why would i banish it you know what i'm saying it's like all these effects activate when they're sent to the graveyard like why would i activate a card that activates when a monster is banished or why would i use a card whose condition is to banish one of my monsters it just it just doesn't make sense <laughs> so yeah uh that's the world chalice or world legacy i don't know if all of this would be in code of the duelist it seems like uh, half of it might be in uh circuit break so um I'll, I'll leave um in the in the video you, you'll you'll be able to see which ones actually come in code of the duelist but you know i guess i just reviewed the whole archetype honestly it's not you know again you know i think it's uh it's good it's fun as a link deck you know just to bring the link mechanic in but it's not the best deck to play if you just want like a new good deck I, I don't think this is going to be something for you but if you just want to try out links and to get used to the mechanic in general i think this can be um a deck to be a stepping stone until we get an actually really strong link based deck so i guess it's all for now this was nistro here nistro out